After Nineveh was destroyed in 612 BC, the Assyrian kingdom was divided into three main powers. Media controlled the north and northeast. Babylon controlled Elam and the plains of the Euphrates and the Tigris. Egypt controlled everything west of the Euphrates and North Africa. It was within this division that Egypt controlled that this city, Jerusalem, found herself paying homage to Egypt. The kingdom of Judah became a vassal unto the king of Egypt. This city trusted in Egypt for security instead of trusting to the Most High that ruleth in the kingdoms of men. The divine record shows us this in 2 Kings 23. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in the room of Josiah his father, and turned his name to Jehoiakim, and took Jehoahaz away. And he came to Egypt and died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold of the people of the land, of every one according to his taxation, to give it unto Pharaoh Necho. The growing power and ambition of Babylon soon led to a clash with Egypt. The Babylonian crown prince Nebuchadnezzar was taking control from his aging father. In 607 BC, Nebuchadnezzar embarks on a military campaign. This campaign took them, among other places, to Kashmish. It was there that the armies of Egypt and Babylon met during 605 BC, which was the fourth year of Jehoiakim's reign over Judah. In this battle at Kashmish, Pharaoh Necho and Nebuchadnezzar fulfilled the words of God in Jeremiah chapter 46. The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Gentiles. Against Egypt, against the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was by the river Euphrates in Carchemish, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, smote in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. The word that the Lord spake to Jeremiah the prophet, how Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, should come and smite the land of Egypt. Declare ye in Egypt, stand fast and prepare thee, for the sword shall devour round about thee. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saith, Behold, I will punish the multitude of No and Pharaoh and Egypt with their gods and their kings, even Pharaoh and all them that trust in him. And I will deliver them into the hand of those that seek their lives, and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of his servants. Egypt and their allies were overcome and put to flight in a single battle. Nebuchadnezzar stripped Pharaoh of his conquests and drove him back into Egypt. The completeness of this victory is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 24. And the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his land, for the king of Babylon had taken from the river of Egypt unto the river Euphrates all that pertained to the king of Egypt. History tells us that after this victory, Nebuchadnezzar's father died on the 16th of August, 605 BC. Within three weeks, Nebuchadnezzar was back into Babylon and ascended the throne as sole ruler although he was already joint ruler in 607 BC, two years before. It was during this military campaign that Nebuchadnezzar came to this city, Jerusalem, and besieged it. It was the third year of Jehoiakim's reign over Jerusalem. This was the accomplishment of the first words of the book of Daniel. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. It would have been a hard thing to have lived here and witnessed the terrors of battle, seeing your beloved city and the temple destroyed, the treasures taken, and worst of all, the young, talented children of the royal house taken captive. But God had given Jerusalem a very clear warning of what to expect. He warned them through his prophet Isaiah 107 years beforehand. And this is found in 2 Kings chapter 20. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. The Hebrews were taken captive into Babylon. 
in 606 BC. This marks the beginning of the 70-year prophecy spoken by Jeremiah the prophet. As Daniel and his three friends went into Babylon, they went via Haran, and thus they retraced the steps that Abraham originally made when he was called out of the land of the Chaldees. These young men would have been greatly discouraged as they went into Babylon. But you can imagine how much comfort they received by the words recorded here in Jeremiah. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Daniel and his three friends sought the Lord during this catastrophic event, and they found God to be a personal comfort and guide. Have you found God in your calamities? Thank you.